So the new AP poll is out for the up and coming week eight. And it's uh, no real big surprises. Again, um, a couple of head scratchers, really a couple of things that, you know, just on the surface, I, I didn't really understand. And a lot of people don't understand, but Hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, again, like we normally do, we'll cover the top 12 and we'll start with 12 and work our way down. So number 12, the new number 12 coming in this week, uh, Notre Dame, um, Notre Dame after their win against Stanford, uh, 49 to seven, when they actually drop one, um, uh, from 11 to 12. Um, and that's the kind of things that really doesn't make sense. You know, several teams, well, I know one other one in particular, like they won their game, but they dropped. So I guess the voters maybe just didn't think they looked very good. I, I don't know. But Notre Dame's coming in at number 12, 5 and 1 after their win, uh, down one. Uh, Tennessee, this is really kind of kind of the big one. You know, Tennessee had their 23 to 17 overtime win over Florida. Uh, so Tennessee's now 5 and 1, coming in at number 11 this week, dropping three spots from eight. So. Yeah, like I said, I mean, Tennessee, you know, there were parts of that game where they didn't really look that great. You know, the, it should have been a little more easier for them to get the win. But, hey, you know, coming in at 11, you know, they're still, you know, up there a little bit. So, like I said, a little bit of a head scratcher, but it is what it is. Clemson um, didn't move at all. Clemson uh, with a 49-14 win over Wake Forest. Coming in at five and one, they're number ten this week. They stayed right where they were. Um, they were number ten last week. So, you know, even with a, I, I guess the voters didn't think that was a very impressive enough win, or just the teams in front of them didn't do as bad as they needed to to move Clemson up a little bit. So, Clemson's going to keep the the ten spot. Number nine, Iowa State, with their twenty eight to sixteen win over West Virginia. Um, Iowa State six and zero, um, they're you know overall, but you know coming out of the the Big Ten, Iowa is increasingly um, a, a favorite in that league. Um, you know when they really get down, we'll see how the rest of those games play and how everything plays out with, of course, uh, Penn State and Ohio State. But Iowa State is definitely in that conversation. Um, Iowa State with this win actually moves up to to number nine from number 11 so they actually got a little bit of a boost with with their road win um, against west virginia so number eight lsu um very impressive win albeit an overtime um win you know against old miss 29 to 26 puts lsu at five and one on the year they move up five spots to number eight so it puts them inside the the top 10, it was just a really good, a really good game. I don't want to go to the extent to say that Ole Miss was exposed or anything like that, but, you know, LSU hang on, they hung on, they, they fought all the way to the end, tied it up, went to overtime, Ole Miss couldn't do anything, and or Ole Miss kicked a field goal in, in overtime, and on LSU's first play of their, their, over, of their first overtime possession, uh, a passing touchdown to a pretty wide open receiver. So a very well-deserved win for, for LSU there coming in at number eight. Uh, Alabama stayed right where they were at number seven, again, with their 27 to 25 win over South Carolina that a lot of people are calling a, a bit of a struggle win. Um, but the the issues at Alabama go far beyond the the field. They, Alabama has some some culture problems right now. That coaching staff does not have any semblance of control over that team. Um, the the coaches the the coaching staff doesn't run that team. Uh, a handful of the players on the team do. You know, with some of the stuff we've seen from some of the players so far this year, I, Alabama was lucky to get that win. You know, they they. They Alabama did just exactly what they needed to do to to get by to come out with that win and avoid you know a second straight loss um, to an SEC school. So they stayed at number seven. They are now five and one with their win over South Carolina. 
Number six, Miami, bye week. So an easy one there. They're uh, six and zero, oh, and they they didn't move them at all. They were they were ranked number six before. They're ranked number six now. And like I said, they had a bye week. So we'll see how they go moving through the rest of their ACC schedule on into the second half of the year. Uh, Georgia comes in at number five. They didn't move either. They were number five last week, so they kept them there. Uh, Georgia's five and one with their forty-one to thirty-one win over Mississippi State. Um, you know, if, if, I would have probably guessed the that score was was as tight as it was. I do remember saying in the the preview video that however many points Georgia was favored by, it was too many. And uh, you know, I'm kind of in the camp that regardless of the the point spread, or really regardless of the opponent, if you favor Georgia by more than probably 14, 15 points, maybe 16, that's too many points. Um, I I don't think Georgia – has Georgia even covered the spread at all this year? Maybe once, Um, if any. In in six games, uh, Georgia has only covered the spread one time, if that. Um, They're just not – I mean, they're, they're doing what they need to do to win. And, you know, it, it's getting them through their their schedule. So, you know, when I say it like that, it almost sounds like we don't really know exactly what, what Georgia has. But, but you know, we do. I mean, we know the kind of kind of team. We know the kind of game they're going to play. You know, if they need to score 41 on an opponent to win, they will. You know, if they needed to score 13 against Kentucky, well, that's what they did. So, but, so Georgia's still at number five, ranked five and one. Um uh, with a 41-31 win over Mississippi State. Penn State moved up one spot to number three. Uh, Penn State 6-0 with their 33-30 to overtime win against USC. Uh, traveled all the way across the country to that one. That one was, was played in the Coliseum, so a really long trip, literally from Pennsylvania to L.A. I couldn't imagine doing, doing that, but Penn State comes out with a win, uh, and it just come down to – to field goals in overtime. USC you know, tried to kick one and, and missed one, and uh, Penn State attempted theirs and got it. So come away with a 33-30 to overtime win against USC. Keeps them undefeated at 6-0. and uh, Moves them up, like I said, to number three. Penn State's another one of those powers in the uh, Big Ten that, you know, we'll just have to see how it kind of comes out at the end of the year. You know, I'm pretty sure they've still got – Ohio State on the schedule, so you know that game will be very telling um, when it when it comes to that. But you know a, a, every week counts, you know, especially now that all these teams are kind of in the thick of their their conference schedules. Oregon moved up one spot to number two. Oregon is also undefeated at six and zero with their thirty two to thirty one win over Ohio State. Um, I may have skipped Ohio State. I'll go back to that one in a minute. But, yeah, uh, number two, Oregon played Ohio State. Um, Oregon moved up one spot to number two. They are 6-0, and like I said, a 32-31 win. And that game came right down to the end. I was able to watch the last last little bit of it, and that was, that was an entertaining game. So I'm sure the whole game was. With Ohio State taking that loss, Ohio State actually fell two spots from number two to number four. Um, so Ohio State's five and one, Oregon six and zero. Oh. Um, again, you know, Big Ten new Big Ten rivals going at it with Oregon brand new into the into the Big Ten now. So that was a, a really good home win home win for Oregon there against Ohio State and still at number one, Texas undefeated at six and zero. Oh. With a, a very convincing one-sided win uh, over Oklahoma, thirty-four to three in the Red River rivalry game, but Oklahoma just didn't didn't couldn't really get anything going. You know, Oklahoma, Oklahoma jumps out to a three nothing lead, and then Texas scores a thirty-four unanswered just throughout the duration, the the rest of the game, and really kind of kind of put it away. Uh, Oklahoma didn't really have an answer. For anything Texas did, Quinn Ewers played the whole game, um, and by all accounts, from what I'm hearing, a lot of people are saying he played his worst game of the season, you know, and still beats Oklahoma 34 to three. So 
That's the new top 12, Texas, Oregon, Penn State, Ohio State, Georgia, Miami, Alabama, LSU, Iowa State, Clemson, Tennessee, and Notre Dame. Um, so we'll see how the schedules, as far as what games are scheduled for next weekend. I know um, the two big, to me, the two biggest games next week are going to be the Alabama-Tennessee game and the Georgia-Texas game. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, ranked, you know, teams involved with all that. So I'll, I'll try to have some pretty good preview videos out for that. But yeah, not a whole lot of shakeup on the new, on the new AP poll. Um, uh, with, with a few surprises, but nothing just jaw-dropping. So hope y'all enjoyed the video. See you next time.